Hi, I'm Matthew Cyrus, and in this video, we're going to look at baking some detail down onto this model. Uh, the software we're going to use is called XNormals, and it's free to use, so you can download it in the link below. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got my mesh uh, that I've been building, the prop, um, and now we need to bake some of the detail down. I'm going to show you a couple of methods that I use. The first one is XNormals, which is a high to low poly baking piece of software. Now, if this was really, really low poly, because I think the final try count for this is 5,000, which is quite small, especially seeing that it's going to be on the character's arm and the player's going to interact with it. So a lot of this, these buttons are here necessarily. I think I mentioned before that we could bake these buttons down but if the player is interacting with them, you want them as actually physically ob uh, physical objects because you want to animate them, like pushing in and out, that sort of stuff. And it's the same with these bolts here. Now, we could bake these bolts down, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, but on this final version, their actual geometry, because they stick out far too much for a normal map to fake. And they're quite big as well. And it's the same up here as well. So this is actual light that goes on. And we could bake this down, but again, it just sticks out too much. So the only things that you could, it, say, for example, if you were to LOD this and you had different LODs, so when it wasn't on screen, you'd have a lower type of LOD, um, we could bake this sort of detail down quite easily, and this would be just flat. Same with this here. Um, same with this, this bit here as well, although saying that, it's quite a deep deep cut so I probably wouldn't um, I mean if we really wanted to save we could bake the detail down here and now in the final version of it there is detail on here panel detail which I create in Quixel Suite which I'll show you uh, a bit later on uh, but to begin with what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, get the UVs out first so what I need to do is is I'm just going to select all of these and just go to the UV editor okay, and I'm going to create a new UV snapshot with the items that I need so let's have a look at this I'm going to change this I'm just off screen at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go to images. I'm going to save this. Um, motion tracker UVs. UV. Click save. And that will have saved it. Click apply. If we click apply again, it'll ask us to overwrite so we know it's saved it. Make sure it's saved as a target as well um, for this click close and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to show you how uh, I'm going to bake so I'm just going to um, hide these so let's hide this hide this okay so for example, if I wanted to bake some detail down, I can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a bake plane. Now I'm baking to a plane. Um, and if I just go on over to here and grab my, this, I'm just going to change this to one and one. And then I'm going to snap it to the grid. I'm just going to make this slightly bigger three by three not that, don't do that map that's not what we want okay so I've got my bait plane and I'm gonna call it high poly bake plane okay so now what we want to do is I'm just gonna hide that by pressing H and this is why I always have my outliner up so I can easily unhide stuff um, and I'm going to create a bolt 
So let's uh, so let's have a look at this now. Um, one of my video series on this channel is uh, how to create bolts using Quixel Suite. Um, we can also build them inside of Maya. You can build anything and bake it down. Um, one of the rules that you need to do when you're doing high poly modeling is that you can't have fully 90 degree angles. You need a bevel in there so that the um, when it bakes it down, um, it'll capture the corners. Uh, so let's change this to say six. Let's grab the bevel edge and let's say 0.3. There we go. Now I am going to make this slightly bigger. I'm just going to delete the bottom because there's no point having the bottom in because we're not going to see it. And I'm just going to make this bigger in terms of there. Yep. So the next thing I'm going to do is say I wanted to make a little uh, like slit. So what I can do is and if I just put the wireframe on for this as well and let's have a look at it from the top I can do that because most bolts will have this kind of like screw so you can tighten it up depending on the bolt, depending on the screw that sort of stuff now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly make it slightly Make sure it's centered. I'm just going to slightly make it bigger, and then I'm going to boolean it. Uh, so, and no, not union. Let's uh, boolean difference. There we go. Most most of these things um, we would need to clean this up. So, for example, um, we could just use the clean up. We're not going to use this. This is something what we call throwaway modeling. We ain't. We aren't going to use it on our actual model itself. We're just going to bake the detail down. So, we. I don't. At this point, I use clean up because it's quicker. The only. Th the only issue with this is, is if we say we want to bevel these edges here. Now, if we did do the clean up, it's not going to let us bevel. I don't think. If we try that. Oh, it's dirty. So I'm going to clean it up myself actually. Okay, so ignore that for now, and I'm going to grab the insert edge loop tool. He says. Okay, you don't want to work. Let's, let's bevel that. Get rid of that. Actually, let's, let's bring that to the center, that to the center, and let's see if I can bevel this slightly. There we go. But this is point one. And then what I can do is, let's uh, have a look at it here. So that's what I want. Actually, do you know what? This is too big of a bevel. So I'm going to just change it slightly. I have to go back a bit. <laughs> Make sure you're happy with what you do before you do it. So bevel. Nope. Let's grab those edges again and bevel. And let's make this a point one. Uh, let's merge this to center again and again I'm just using shift to do this I'm just gonna grab these and the side one isn't too much of an issue because we're gonna actually there you go well, let's just make sure this is all merged There you go. Okay, so if we have a look at that, there you go. It's going to capture that nice little bevel there and there. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're probably just going to um, 
clean this up because if we try and bait this now it's not going to happen because it's an end gun so we can go to clean up uh, click apply and make sure this is ticked here faces with more than four sides and that will clean it up for us um, it's dirty but it's still we're just going to bait this so it doesn't matter um, I'm just going to call this high poly um, bolt okay so let's get our bait plane now we want our bait plane uh, we could actually make this slightly bigger so we can see it obviously you want to do it the size of what it is but for this example I'm making it a little bit bigger so we can see it I'm just going to put it in the quadrant up here okay also as well just going to make sure that the actual plane is UV'd uh, because if it isn't then we're going to have a bit of an issue when we come to bait this that's fine it's between 0 and 1 yep cool let's go to classic view and we're just going to bring this bait plane up so it just covers it and then what we're going to do is I'm going to do that bring the pivot there use history okay and I'm just going to export the bait plane so for this example I'm just going to put it on my uh, desktop and call this um, high poly plane or bait plane whatever you want really uh, let's just make sure there's nothing none of these are ticked so that's fine and I'm just going to grab the bolt and I'm going to go freeze history and export again I'm just going to put it on the desktop for this time being click export and then I'm going to open up xnormals and xnormals will look something like this now it looks like it was designed in 1995 but it is, it's a really good tool and I use it all the time I'm just going to reset so if anything ever goes wrong you can reset it restore to default settings here my uh, my laptop just ping. sorry about that um, I'm going to reset to default settings uh, and then I'm going to come in here and we have high definition mesh and low so the bait plane is actually going to go into here the low definition because we are baking that detail that high poly bolt to the plane which is the low poly now for example if you were baking a object then you would bake uh, the low poly would go in the low poly the high poly will go in the high poly now I don't tend to bake full things completely like characters yes environment stuff I bake them in parts because you don't want to like make one massive high poly and then not and then try and bake it down and it doesn't bake down so instead of like wasting a lot of time I bake in parts and then stitch it together um, it's just how I work some people work a different way it, it's entirely up to you um, so let's uh, let me go to my desktop and get the bolt and put it in the high definition and then we'll get the low poly add the mesh there's the plane now couple things we're going to use a ray trace calculator because we're going to calculate the different distance between the plane and the high poly okay and that's why we wanted it as close as possible on top so if I click go we can see not a lot of distance between it which is going to be good um, you can leave it for 30 seconds or you can leave it for five click OK close and then if we now go into here you can see that it's taking that information and, and uh, done it okay now the only other way would be as if you were using a cage and then you wouldn't need to do the ray trace because the cage would be on top of the high poly anyway the low poly so that's that's fine uh, baking options so we can change this so I'm going to change it to 2048 by 2048 uh, I'm going to get rid of edge padding because we don't need it for this one and I'm going to change this to you know, this is just the bucket size when your little squares come up and you can you know, I'm going to keep it a normal map and I'm going to whack the normal the anti-aliasing up to four times I'm going to output this to my desktop I'm going to call this uh, bolt okay do, 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 do. click generate map now if we'd left it as an end gun, we would have had a warning saying cannot bake um, due to the, yeah. Okay. 
Now you can see that it hasn't captured the sides, and the reason for that is because it's not it's it's baking to a plane. You're baking to a flat surface. Now if we were to bake this to a another bolt which didn't have the like the lip in it. Um, and we wanted something going around the outside like a thread, then we would bake, use a cage method instead of this flat bake. But this is fine for this. Click close. And if I then grab, open up Photoshop, which I should have opened up. We can also bake um, ambient occlusion, but I'm going to show you how I bake ambient occlusion um, in the next video when we're using Quixel Suite because I, I use a mixture of cavity and an AO to, to get myself an ambient occlusion map. Adds a little bit more depth to it. In the next video, we're going to look at how I use Quixel Suite to bake out. In the next video, we're going to look at how I use Quixel Suite to build some of this pattern work here, as well as how I use Quixel Suite to build a AO map um, and getting that ready for substance. So I'll see you in the next video.